Welcome to our lecture online. Even though we mentioned before that using a table of values is not an ideal method when the solution contains a fraction, sometimes it does work. And in addition to that, it gives us some interesting insight. So let's try it. Again, we have our values. We're going to plug in for x starting from 0. First, we go in a positive direction. Then we go into a negative direction. So starting out with 0 is easy enough. Plug in zeros for x, we get the left side being equal to negative 4, so definitely that is not a solution. How about x equals 1? So let's go over here. We have x equals 1. That means we get 2 times 1 squared plus 7 times 1 minus 4. And so that gives us uh, 1 squared is 1 times 2. That's 2 plus 7 minus 4, which is equal to 9 minus 4 is equal to 5. So notice something interesting happened here. We went from 0 to 1. 0 we have a negative value, 1 we have a positive value, so here there is a transition from negative to positive, which means there may be a solution hidden between these two values. All right, we're going to ignore that for now, we're going to continue and see what happens when we plug in a 2. So we have x equals 2, that means 2 times 2 squared plus 7 times 2 minus 4, that's uh, 4 times 2 which is 8, uh, plus 14 minus 4, which is equal to uh, 18. And notice when from 5 to 18, the number is beginning to get bigger. Let's see what happens when we plug in a 3. When x equals 3, we get 2 times 3 squared plus 7 times 3 minus 4. So that gives us 9. That's 18 plus 21 minus 4. That's 14. That uh, looks like it's 35. So 35, and notice it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. It doesn't look like it's ever going to get back to zero because notice that the two first terms are always going to be positive when I plug in a positive value for x, and I'm only subtracting a 4, so that's only going to get bigger as x gets bigger. So I don't even have to try 4 anymore. How about x equals negative 1? So when x equals negative 1, I get 2 times negative 1 squared plus 7 times negative 1 minus 4, that gives us, a, that's a 2 minus 7 minus 4, which is minus 11. And so um, notice that when it was 0, I got minus, minus 4. When I get negative 1, I got minus 11. So it looks like it's getting further and further away from 0, but don't give up right away. Let's see what happens when we plug in x equals negative 2. That's 2 times negative 2 squared plus 7 times negative 2 minus 4. That's uh, 4 times 2, which is 8, minus 14, minus 4, that's minus 18, plus 8, which is equal to um, negative 10. Negative 10, let's see, let's try that again, that's uh, 4, that's 8, minus 14, minus 6, minus 4, yes, negative 10. Notice that it was getting further away from 0, but now it stopped doing that. Negative 10 is closer to 0 than negative 11. It may converge back to a 0. Let's see what happens when x equals negative 3. x equals negative 3. So we have 2 times negative 3 squared plus 7 times negative 3 minus 4. That's uh, equal to, that's 9, that's 18 minus 21 minus 4. That's equal to negative 7. And sure enough, it looks like it may be getting back down to zero again. Let's, happen, let's see what happens when x equals negative 4. So I have 2 times negative 4 squared plus 7 times negative 4 minus 4. That's minus 28. Minus 4 is minus 32. And that's uh, 16 times 2 is 32, which is equal to zero. Ha! There it is. I have one of the solutions. Notice I went from a negative number to zero. Now let's see what happens at x equals negative 5. At x equals negative 5, I end up with 2 times negative 5 squared plus 7 times negative 5 minus 4. That's 25, that's 50 minus 35 minus 4, which is equal to uh, positive 11. Positive 11. And now think about it. As I plug in large and large and negative numbers, so since it is squared, this first term will become much bigger faster than the second term becoming a bigger negative number. So the sum of these two combined will always be a positive number, a large and larger positive number. So it looks like this is never going to get back down to zero. Just try one more. When x equals 
uh, negative 6, we have 2 times negative 6 squared plus 7 times negative 6 minus 4. That's 36, that's 72. Uh, minus 42 minus 4, that would be 30 minus 4, which is 26. Notice when x equals negative 6, I get 26, and it looks like from now on, those results are going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. So notice I went from negative to positive here. When a, a transition from negative to positive, during the transition I have to cross over 0, which is where I find one of my solutions. Here I have to cross over. Inside here, between 0 and 1, is another solution, but notice it is a fraction, not a number. So you may go halfway and say, okay, let's try x equals 1 half. So if x equals 1 half, what happens? Well, let's do one more calculation. Oh, I can do it over here. I guess I have some room. So I have x equals 1 half. That gives us 2 times 1 half squared plus 7 times 1 half minus 4. So we have 1 half squared, which is 1 quarter times 2, which is equal to 1 half, plus 7 times 1 half, which is uh, 7 halves, minus 4. And so that's equal to 8 halves, or 4 minus 4, which is 0. And sure enough, when x equals 1 half, the result is 0. So when I plug in a half here for a value, I end up with a 0. And there is one more solution, our second solution, and we found it by going in between 0 and 1. Now, of course, if the fraction had to be a third or a seventh or a ninth, you can imagine it gets more difficult and difficult to find. You can try a little bit of trial and error, but notice you reali we realized there had to be another solution because we went from a negative value for the quadratic equation to a positive value. From a negative value to a positive value, whenever we cross over from a negative to a positive or a positive to a negative, that's when the line crosses the x-axis, that's where there must be a solution. And sometimes, even if it's a fractional solution, like the value for x is a fraction, we can still find it by trying some values in between those two integer numbers. And that is how it's done.